Hi, this is your host, Sapna Bharti, and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk here at KubeCon and CloudNativeCon in Valencia, Spain. And today we have with us Matthew Bates, co-founder and CTO of Jetstack. Matthew, it's great to have you on the show. Oh, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, pretty glad to be here. Of course, I've been to booths and I've seen your booth downstairs as well. Uh, but this is the first time we are talking to each other, so I would love to know a bit about the company since you're also a co-founder. Uh, tell me uh, why you created the company. The company is also relatively old in this in this world of cloud native era. <laughs> you guys are almost grandpa grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> you you are as old as Kubernetes. So talk about why you created the company, what problem you're trying to solve back then, and then we'll talk about what's going on now. Sure. So uh, we founded the company back in 2015. So this is just a year after um, the open source project, the Kubernetes open uh, source project uh, was uh, was started. And at the time, um, I worked at MongoDB, and this was at a time when you know, gr great growth um, in, in NoSQL and a real demand for uh, databases as a service. You know, being able to consume lots of databases you know, and orchestrate uh, the databases uh, across you know, potentially multiple clouds. And so it took a took a real um, took a real interest in Kubernetes because it sort of saw it as the future of being able to uh, build uh, build on. So build, you, know, you almost have to be the substrate that you can build complex, uh, potentially stateful systems on. So we, we founded the company because we felt that this presented like a really interesting opportunity to be able to build those systems, but also for enterprises to like rethink the way that they um, they, they, they develop and they build and ship software as well. We thought it was you know, really the start of a real a real shift. And we knew that uh, just like we'd seen with NoSQL, just like we'd previously seen with cloud, that a lot of enterprise was going to need a lot of help. Huge amount of new technology arriving. They would need to be able to understand it, embrace it. And so for the early years, we, we started out with, with consulting in mind. So rather than building a product, we really wanted to get close to customers, we really wanted to understand help them educate them. So we did a lot of training, we did a lot of, you know, almost a, you know, you know, evangelizing really um, of, of the project um, and understanding where the gaps were uh, as well. So we wanted to help them uh, you know, really make the most of it. And we had you know, a great number of successes with, you know, early startups. We were helping some of the, you know, some of the hottest um, kind of startups um, in the UK, some of the, for instance, some of the challenger banks uh, as an example. Uh, and they managed to really get going uh, with our help. And, and now, of course, they're the rest is history. They're running the entire banks uh, on, on Kubernetes. But what we learned along the way, well, the gaps, we kind of realized where, you know, Kubernetes fulfilled the need, but actually there was additional, uh, additional requirement or, you know, required capabilities. And one of those was around certificate management. Like, it's, it's, it's a hard problem, you know, being able to, developers especially not keen to, you know, fetch certificates and particularly to have to renew them as well. Everyone yeah, it's, yeah it's, it, there's a lot of toil effectively associated with fetching a certificate and ensuring that it keeps, uh, you know, remains up to date. So we built in the very early days a project we call Cube Lego. Um, the Lego Let's Encrypt Go. So we use the Let's Encrypt Go library um, in order to automate the issuance of certificates uh, using Acme. And this is at a time when Let's Encrypt uh, was just coming about and, uh, you know, quick, easy, free certificates. <laughs> you know, what's not to like? So um, we... Uh, use that in order to you know, automate certificates for Kubernetes and, and OpenShift. And it really, really um, picked up a huge amount of interest. A couple of years later, I realized, actually, it's not just, it's not just Acme. You know, this, this is a problem that's faced by enterprise. And uh, you know, really, we, can we plug in other CAs? Um, how, how can we make this really extensible um, to lots of different CAs? How can we also make it agnostic of use case? Because Certificates get used for all sorts of purposes. X509 certificates get used for all sorts of purposes. So we built Cert Manager. So we started the, the Cert Manager project. Um, it's a project that we still maintain today uh, uh, as well. Uh, donated that to the CNCF last year. So it's now a sandbox project um, downloaded uh, you know, millions of times uh, a day and used by you know, many, many developers across the cloud native community and also used by ecosystem projects um, as well. You know, for instance, we've worked with the Istio project as an example, the, the Linkerd project, um, in order to integrate it um, into, um, into in, you know, integrate it as part, of, as part of their software. Excellent. So if I ask you, you know, in, in a nutshell, I mean, the way you're explaining the kind of problem you're trying to solve for the ecosystem, what exactly is just stack today? You know, what do you folks actually do? Do you help, you know, just with uh, getting started with uh, Kubernetes or you help them, you know, because now you're doing so many different things. 
So who are you? <laughs> Absolutely. So today we are an advisory and a product company. Um, so we continue the advisory today. We have a, a team that work uh, across uh, Europe, uh, helping customers. Um, we're working with some very, very big banks um, at the moment as they're really effectively replatforming. They're, they're taking you know, entire systems um, and they're moving them across to Kubernetes at quite some scale, hundreds and hundreds of clusters. And they're having to do so with security foremost in mind. This, you know, clearly banks, regulated um, industries um, want to be able to embrace this because they need to move fast, but they need to do it securely. Um, so we have teams that are helping them to understand um, the challenges and really using uh, the breadth of the tools in the CNCF to, to, to address that. So advisory, very important to us training. People are entering this ecosystem all the time for the very first time and they need to be able to understand how to make best use of this technology. And so we do a huge amount of training in person. We do some really interesting wargaming where we actually break things and see how things look. We're going to look on day two and beyond. And um, that, you know, really fun, um, really challenging um, that the, uh, the companies really value. We also have now, and we've been building with the help uh, of our parent company, Venify, um, a product um, for CERT Manager. So if you're taking CERT Manager, the open source project, and you're operating it across many clusters, potentially many clouds, and embracing things like service mesh as well for doing you know, secure service to service, kind of mutual TLS, uh, as many of our customers are, uh, we're building effectively a control plane that enables you to have control, you know, consistency uh, of those uh, configurations, the orchestration and, and the visibility. Uh, as well, and that's really helping yeah, some of our biggest customers to take you know really cloud native zero trust to the, the sort of the scale that they are now demanding. Since you kind of been there for a very long time, the kind of the whole ecosystem has evolved, markets evolved. The use cases of Kubernetes early days it was kind of more or less like serverless. Today it's all you know. St sorry, early days was stateless, and you know it, like stateful applications are there. Uh, we are talking about data production. We are talking about security. We are talking about high availability. The, what we would see in a traditional IT uh, landscape is becoming the Kubernetes. But compared to traditional IT lamp stack, Kubernetes is much more complicated. There so many knobs to turn. Uh, so, um, also, you talked about banks. Uh, of course, security is important to them, but regulations are even more important. And if, especially if you look at European banks, you know they are even more. You know, so how have you seen the space evolve over time uh, as you are serving these, you know, folks who want to consume Kubernetes? So I think really um, go back a few years, a number of those types of customers. Uh, really started small. Yeah, that, yeah, if you go back to some of the early KubeCons, uh, a number of those customers starting small, um, small clusters, really generally speaking, you know, one application, uh, perhaps you know, one line of business, um, experimenting with, with, with cloud native. Think fast forward now a number of years, and what we're seeing, particularly in some of our biggest customers, is entirely, entire replatforming. This is not just serving one line of business, but this is now proving value uh, to almost the entire enterprise. They want to be able to move fast. You know, a number of our customers, you know, they, they need to, you know, they need to keep up. They need to mean, remain relevant. They need to be, um, you know, delighting, you know, their customers. And so, what we're finding now is that as the, the ecosystem is maturing, um, it's it's you know, it's getting to a level where they actually uh, can bring, you know, mission, you know, critical, you know, production workloads um, to communities and, and of course OpenShift as well. Can you also talk about because as you're talking about the banks' uh, security. Uh, Traditional IT world security was someone else's problem. We are seeing a shift led movement. Uh, we talk about uh, you know zero trust, but sometimes these are more of jargons than seeing in actual practice. Sure. Because uh, even you know talking about zero trust is easy, but implementing it, you know, most people have no clue what it is. Yeah, uh, so so how have you like what kind of problem you see there? Because you actually help customers in resolving them. We do, we do. We're, we're imbe embedded in a number of customers who, who are doing this. And what we're starting to see is you know, a real interest in you know, sort of DevSecOps. So now really thinking about security first. Um, so rather than it being that sort of you know, somewhat afterthought, you know, when you've built everything um, and you've then put it to the security team for, for effective you know, for approval, um, what we're now seeing is security being embedded uh, a lot sooner um, in the software development lifecycle. And in fact, when projects kick off, applications are build, being built for the very first time, having the security teams um, actually there. And I think 
I think well, certainly a benefit of something like Kubernetes is, is now security can be a platform offering. It can actually be built into the platform. So developers themselves have um, all the tooling built into the tool chains that they already use. The controls are put in place such that they you know, have confidence that what they're putting through that, that life cycle is secure, is you know, trustworthy, is reliable. Um, so I think, yes, yeah, certainly much more interest in DevSecOps than we're actually beginning to even see people with, you know, with those titles, with, you know, in, in some of those customers that we have. It's, it's, yeah, it's basically it's really being realized now um, in, in the industry. So we talked about the company, we talked about the kind of problem you're solving, we, talk, we talked about the, you know, kind of customer base user, you know, where you're focusing on. We also talk about anything else you want to talk about? Do you think we have touched some core points to understand what the company is doing? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that we've um, just put out just recently, um, in, in fact, uh, just this week, um, is, a, is a toolkit for a secure uh, software supply chain. It's absolutely um, uh, yeah, on everyone's lips at the moment. In fact, um, I'm pretty sure the S-bomb and uh, you know, various, um, various kind of keywords even get mentioned now in the boardroom. It's, uh, this is something that we need to take seriously. Um, SolarWinds, Log4j, we're, we're all aware of the very kind of high, pri high profile um, you know, attacks that have been made. And I think it's definitely woken people up um, to uh, the risk um, and, and also the sophistication uh, of the risks uh, as well and the attacks that we, we, we now see. So I think it's really shining a light. And of course, just this morning, one of the keynotes we were hearing from Shopify uh, about the, what they're practicing and how they're addressing it as well. So we've, we've, what we've done is we've taken a lot of the great, great guidance that's out there. So the CNCF, of course, have a white paper um, on this. NIST have put out some guidelines following you know, the executive order uh, and you know, a number of other materials that are out there. But there's a kind of a lot out there to, to digest. I mean, you know, and if you're a company um, that's got a, a supply chain already, a software supply chain, how do you make changes to it? Um, how, you know, how can you actually uh, raise your salsa level? Um, for instance, there's you know, hundreds you know, of, of, of recommendations. So what we've done with the toolkit is provided a, a really digestible means to be able to understand, okay, what's the guidance? Um, what's, what's high priority? and what's low effort. And so really um, using a kind of radar, what we're able to do is point people to um, really actionable recommendations that they can take, linking out to those you know, created uh, articles um, around the, from the CNCF, for instance, and, and as well as the, the Vendify blueprint that, 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 uh, that is open source. So yeah, they're really, really providing that means to understand what they can do. And it might well be just sort of taking the small steps, not, you know, fast forwarding, uh, you know, over years of effort potentially to uh, to south to level four, but but actually really taking the the small steps that companies can take today to increase their their security uh, posture. Matthew, thank you so much for taking time out uh, today and talk about, of course, not only the company but the. I mean, you talked about some niche tech, which were like more fintech, but you know, it, it solves the broader problem as well. So thanks for sharing those insights as well. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank oh, you. Love to be back. Thanks very much.